Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself, Amata. Hope you guys have had a good week. I know it's been a little while since you've heard from me. As you might know, I took some time off last week because it was my mum's birthday, so obviously I went away for a few days to celebrate with her and the rest of my family. And I've just been in the background doing the editing since then. But we, of course, are here, as usual, to talk about the latest news from the tech world from the last 24 or so hours as of the 11th of October. And we've got a fair bit to get stuck into today, and we're going to begin things with Intel. So what we actually have here is a new addition to the 10th generation lineup from the company, and this is a very cheap processor. Now unfortunately they haven't given an exact price because it depends on the number of orders, but it's between $79 to $97. And this is the i3-10100F and is obviously a variant of the 10100 series. And the F variant is essentially the same as the 10100, but comes without integrated graphics, which is why the price has been dropped to between $79 and $97. And just to give you a little bit of context for this information, the full fat 10100, which does come with integrated graphics, costs 122 US dollars. So there is a significant difference in pricing there. Oh, and by the way, no salt required for this one. This is an official announcement from Intel. You can, of course, find that linked below as well as all other links relevant to this video. So, in terms of specifications, we see four cores, eight threads, the base frequency is 3.6 GHz, and the max frequency is 4.3 GHz, and has a TDP of 65 watts. So, essentially, this is targeting the Ryzen 3 3300X, in terms of competition, I should say. I'm not sure how many of you will be interested in an i3 processor, given that, of course, just the other day we're talking about, you know, Rocket Lake and Zen 3 and all this, but it's still an interesting addition to the 10th gen and very cheap indeed. But we're going to move on to a couple of pieces from AMD up next, the first of which is regarding Zen 3 motherboard support. Now, of course, as we already know, AMD did promise to deliver broad support for the next generation Zen 3 processors to their 500 series motherboards. They haven't actually said one way or the other if they're going to be any 600 series motherboards, but I would not be surprised at all if this is a tearful goodbye to AM4 series. Of course, AMD did promise that they support it until you know, 2020, and obviously, well, it's now near the end of 2020. Now, as you may recall, there was a little bit of fallout not, not too long ago where AMD initially announced that the 400 series of motherboards would not re be receiving support for Zen 3. And this was kind of met with a mixture of anger and confusion where people were just like, but why, essentially? And now they have actually made a bit of a change to this position. Now, they have posted an official post on the r slash AMD subreddit. You can, of course, find that linked below. But I'm going to read some segments from this particular post. They said, talking about the BIOS updates for the 400 series chipsets, quote, the process is underway, and we have already begun providing our motherboard partners with the software code to add Ryzen 5000 series support for 400 series motherboard BIOSes. You can expect the first beta releases of these BIOSes to be available for download starting in January 2021. The BIOSes will be made available directly from your preferred motherboard vendors when they are ready. Exact timing and availability will depend on the development, implementation and test schedule for your specific motherboard vendor and model. One change from our May 19th update on this topic, users will not have to verify processor ownership with AMD. We have streamlined the process. As always, users should verify the processes supported by a BIOS update before flashing, as support for legacy CPUs may be removed to make way for the Ryzen 5000 series. This may make the update a one-way process for some motherboards. Please confirm you have a processor supported by the new BIOS before flashing to ensure you can boot your PC after the update. As a reminder, this is the final upgrade path AMD can enable for the 400 series motherboards. Ryzen CPU releases beyond the Zen 3 architecture will re require 
a new motherboard. We continue to recommend that new AMD customers purchase a AMD B550 or X570 motherboard for the best slash easiest user experience. So essentially, if you upgrade your sorry, if you upgrade your BIOS for your motherboard to make way for Zen 3 if you're using a 400 series, be super 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 caught careful that you will actually be able to use that motherboard because it may be getting rid of support for older processors when you update the BIOS. So if you do that and you're a bit of an oops, you might kind of brick yourself a little bit. So just be careful, guys. You can, of course, find the Reddit thread. Now, just to be also super clear on my end, the waiting period until January 2021 does only apply, of course, to 400 series motherboards. If you have a, you know, X570 or a B550 or something along those lines, then you will not have to wait. So it's obviously nice that they, that they have kind of changed their mind on this. It obviously makes things a bit simpler for customers and obviously the deletion, I suppose you could say, of the need to verify your purchase with AMD obviously makes things much, much simpler as well. Still, as I said in our live reaction video to the Zen 3 reveal, of course, you can go watch that on the channel if you so desire. I'm actually pretty impressed by Zen 3 by what they've shown off obviously we are going to be trying to get our hands on a unit whether or not we are actually able to is another matter entirely but we will try and we will if we can do lots and lots of tests but even if we don't manage to get our hands on one I still look forward to seeing them you know get really put through the grinder of benchmarks and testing and, and all that stuff by reviewers and people such as ourselves. But that's us done for AMD today. We're going to move on now to a couple of things regarding NVIDIA. The first of which is sales of the 3080 and 3090. So as I'm sure you're aware, trying to get hold of an RTX 3080 or 3090 has been pretty much like trying to herd cats. The availability has been a bit of a spicy situation shall we say and there have been numerous people who have not been able to get their hands on one and are not willing to pay the scalper prices that are currently doing the rounds and who can blame them now obviously this should have been kind of anticipated beforehand to be honest but it wasn't so here we are and nvidia have finally held up their hands and admitted that their online store needs improvement and changes so at the moment they are basically limiting sales of the founders edition models to quote other partners and i do have a bit of a statement here from sarush at nvidia and he said quotes we have heard your feedback regarding the nvidia online store and are working to improve the experience in the meantime we will be selling our geforce rtx 3080 and rtx 3090 founders edition through other partners in the us you can shop for founders edition at best buy geforce rtx 3080 and rtx 3090 in Europe, we continue to review Founders Edition fulfillment options. Founders Edition units are limited and more will be available in the coming weeks alongside an increasing supply of boards from our global board partners. So, at the moment at least, they are only mentioning Best Buy by name for the United States, but they do state partners in that particular message, so one would only assume that more partners or places to purchase will be added for the US. And of course, no information at all was given on how customers in Europe are supposed to buy the Founders Edition, so it would seem that it's not currently possible. Now, obviously, this is just for the Founders Edition. Obviously, you can still purchase AIB cards from whichever company you like. We are just talking about the RTX 3080 and 3090 Founders Editions, which are very, very hard to get uh, your hands on at the moment. So hopefully NVIDIA will give some information to those of us in Europe so that we can obviously figure out how on earth we're actually going to purchase one of these things. And, of course, more information to customers in the US as well, because just saying, well, go buy a Best Buy is that okay. What if I don't live near a Best Buy? What then? So hopefully there will be more partners added as we move forward, but hopefully they will just fix it sooner rather than later so that people can still get their hands on a Founders Edition card because obviously AOB cards tend to be a bit more expensive uh, because they come with more bells and whistles or different fan layouts or whatever. Let me know in the comments, guys, actually. I'm curious. I might do a little poll if I remember. But even if I don't remember, which I may or may not do, my memory is like a sieve. Anyway, let me know if you have been able to get your hands on a 3080 or 3090, to be fair, 
you know, if if you were intending on buying one, obviously if you had no intention of buying one, then you know it doesn't really apply to you. But if you wanted to buy a thirty eighty, let me know. Have you actually been able to get your hands on one? Be curious to hear or see, I should just say, the split in the comments from that. But we're going to move on now to our final topic for today, which is regarding the RTX 3080 20 gigabytes. So I will say before I get into the meat and potatoes of this particular topic that this information is thanks to the folks over at videocards.com. You can, of course, find their article linked in the description below. And this information has come fresh from their sources. According to them, NVIDIA are going to launch two new SKUs in December. The 3080 20GB and a 3070 16GB again in December. Now that wasn't the only information that their source had to share with them thankfully. They also apparently said that Nvidia did have plans to launch a 3070Ti or Ti, pick your preference, with 6144 CUDA cores but those plans have apparently been scrapped and for those of you wondering why, well apparently no reason was provided but Video cards do speculate that it could have been yields that caused this. Now, what about the long rumored and long, long speculated upon 3060 tie, which of course is in the mid range of the stack for Nvidia this generation? And according again to Video Cards' sources, this has been pushed back to mid November. So let's just recap on everything that I just touched on. So we're going to be seeing the 3080 20GB and 3070 16GB in December. And we're allegedly going to be seeing the 3060Ti in mid-November. Now, obviously we are expecting AMD to show off their upcoming GPUs in just a couple of weeks on the 28th of October to be precise. A couple of days after my birthday actually which is kind of nice a little bit of a <laughs> a late birthday present from AMD there and according to the information that video cards have been able to uh, scrounge up AMD are going to be launching three SKUs on Navi 21 with 16 gigabytes which is why Nvidia are releasing these uh, SKUs with higher memory capacity and the timing is probably very very deliberate as well now obviously this is all a rumour, all based on sources, so your salt shaker and healthy pinches of salt thrown over the shoulder are definitely required for this one. And of course, even if all the information that I just said is 100% correct right now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it won't change. These dates are very flexible and liquid until they're officially announced, and even then of course things can happen and they will be pushed back or changed or whatever. So obviously we should all wait for official word from NVIDIA, but of course a 3080 20GB model has been rumoured since before NVIDIA actually unveiled the RTX 30 series, as well as of course the 3060 that's also been rumoured uh, for quite some time as well. Anyway, with all the red tape and disclaimers out of the way, I will leave you guys to enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thanks very much for watching, your support is highly appreciated. But do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And oh, do check out our Discord link in our description below this video if you so desire. I look forward to seeing you there. See you later. Bye-bye.